Welcome to this online presentation of Pragmadev Specifier, one of the Pragmadev Studio modules. Pragmadev Specifier aims at specifying a system. Specifying meaning that we want to make sure we agree on what the system is supposed to do before doing it. So, let's take an example of an access control system, a system next, sitting next to a building to allow to grant access uh, to the building depending on the card and code you have in your in your hand so if we look at the system at the top level uh, of the architecture so let's say if you open up the uh, the system what you will see first is the architecture uh, so the architecture uh, here in that case is made of two blocks, uh, one called B central, and the other one B local, and you can see the flow of information going from one to the other, and the flow of information going from B local to the environment, the outside of the system, which is basically the user. So you can see the user can input a card or a key, and the system can answer open door, close door, or display a message. So this is like the uh, top level architecture and the flow of information you can see here is basically a bunch of asynchronous messages. Now, if you uh, look inside B central, for example, uh, you, you will define the behavior of the block with a state machine. Um, so in that case, we only have one state machine here. Uh, we could have uh, had uh, several state machines, but in that case, the system is quite simple, so we will only use only one state machine. So P central, this its behavior is described with the state machine, and so we will get in and see here that we have first a start transition. So that's the first thing the system will do. You know, when it starts, it will initialize an internal variable and go to the idle state. Uh, and, and in this idle state, uh, you you see that you can only receive one message, check card and code. And um, when you receive that message with these parameters, so the parameters contain the card and the code, uh, you will go through some verification to find out if it's an administrator or if it's an intruder or an, an employee. Okay. So now the thing here is that in our specification, we really want to uh, show what happens if the user is not registered or if the user is registered. So to, to make, to make the, the behavior uh, realistic, we really have to remember the administrator code. We really have to remember when you add a user and you have to, to uh, you know, really show what happens when an intruder tries to get in and things like that. And, and for that, the modeling language contains some um, uh, action language you can see here, where you can do some comparison, you know, and find out if it's true or false. Uh, you can send out messages, uh, or you can loop, you know, if you go through, like, for example, a table in which we can store the information with the cards and the codes and so on. Uh, and that's that's uh, what what makes the, the 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 model very interesting is that it's executable and uh, but be careful it's not it's not a, a design we're doing here it's really a specification an executable uh, specification uh, you you can have some um, model closer to design in in Pragmatic developer module but not in Pragmatic specifier it's not it's not the goal here so if we go back up. Um, to the top level architecture, you can see that B local uh, block is made of one state machine, and in its state machine you have you know some some states here in red uh, with some um, inputs, uh, and and this this process this this state machine is basically handling the interaction with the. Uh, environment with the uh, real user and um, the um, th that's why you have a bit more states so if we if you look at this one you, you can see the, the counterpart of what we saw before when you wait for the central answer when it says oh it's an administrator an employee or so on uh, it, it will it will decide you know what to do like if it's if it's a, a registered user uh, uh, in that case, or if it's an employee, it, it will ask for a door selection. 
So, okay, uh, now that we have described our, our, our system architecture and behavior with two state machines, uh, what we want to do, because the, the, the model is executable, is to execute it. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we would like to uh, actually describe uh, uh, the interface that looks like the, the, the final system and for that you have what we call the prototyping GUI graphical user interface uh, where you have a bunch of uh, basic widgets like buttons LEDs and text displays and um, this this will connect to, uh, to to the simulator when we execute the model and for example if you click one button here like uh, key 5 um, it will send the key message with parameter one uh, set to five. Uh, and on the other way around, if um, the system outputs display message, um, you can filter out, so there's no filter here. And in that widget, text display, you can see it, it's selected now, uh, it will display the value of parameter one. So the good thing here is that, you know, it knows the inputs and outputs of the system. So it's very, uh, I mean, easy to connect uh, to to uh, uh, the flow of information with your system. So now that we have our uh, interface, what we will do is that we select the system here and run a simulation. Okay. So here we have the simulator interface, and one of the first thing we want to do is that, of course, we want to use this you know little interface we have designed uh, to interact with the system. Okay, we'll put it here. And we want to launch an execution trace, okay? I do not configure it, I just leave the default options, which is uh, one uh, instance per uh, state machine. And now run the system. So you can see when it starts, we uh, can see the two state machines, P local and P central, and the environment. And PLocal is sending this display message to the environment with the parameter and card. And as we uh, designed in our GUI, we said we want to display the value of parameter one in the text display so we can see enter card. So now if we want to interact with the system, the best way is to use this uh, little interface and for example, insert the administrator card and the administrator code here. Okay. And you can trace, you know, what happens uh, within the system and between the system and, and the user. Uh, so now we are the administrator uh, and we can add a user, for example, okay, because we don't have any, any user registered yet. Uh, and, and now what I would like to show you is how to uh, debug the model because the model might not uh, be always correct. So if I, if I stop execution here uh, and, I, and I insert, for example, a new user card like user one, Okay. So you can see it, it, it's ready to be uh, uh, consumed here. And what I will do is I will step within the model and so that we can see where the uh, execution flow goes. You know? and, and we can see that we were in this uh, wait for new user card state, waiting for this card message we have just received. And now we can step in the model and see what it does. And so basically what it does, it remembers the card ID, which is the identifier of the of the new user uh, of the new user card and 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 you know and then later on it will wait for the new user card and so on. So now you can we can really you know debug from a functional point of view the uh, the, the the system you're you're specifying here. Okay. So now um, let's say. It's, it, it's fine, we don't want to debug, we just want to execute. Uh, and you can see like if when you interact with this uh, little uh, graphical user interface, you really don't have to know what, what happens in the background. I mean, you can just like interact with the system and, and you know, okay, I can enter a new user code, you know, what happens and so on. Uh, and really behaves like, like, like what the real uh, final system will, will behave. And, um, one thing uh, in, in that uh, in that case is that uh, you can see the the time on the left here is is um, stays on zero, and that's because we're using discrete time simulation. Now, if I really want to use the time, uh, like for example, if I have a timer here with a value of five, 
and that uh, probably means five seconds because I have a real user interface, it's not like five milliseconds or five microseconds. Then I can just uh, set the timers to really go off based on the system I'm using. So here I'm using Windows. So it will wait for five seconds and after five seconds, you know, the timer goes off. So that in the end, the, the behavior of the interface really looks like the, the final system, okay? So now what we have is basically uh, a new user registered and, and we know this scenario, you know, is correct. You know, I, I registered as an administrator and I added a new user uh, and, and that looks fine. So I will, I will you know, save uh, my execution trace here. Um, and, and, you know, I might want to, to be able to reuse it. Um, I would call it demo, okay? So my demo is here. Um, because actually, if I modify anything in my system, I would like to be able to re-execute the, the scenario we have just been through and make sure I did not make any regression on my system. So what I can ask, um, uh, and it's a bit of an advanced feature, is I can generate the test cases, so it's based on TTCN notation, testing and test combined notation, <clears throat> and it will generate the test cases out of this execution trace. Okay, um, so let's let's go for it, and as you can see now, it has generated these four files, four TTCN three files, and what I can do now is I can select the uh, really test cases here and run again a simulation to see you know how that goes so now th now the difference uh, compared to what I had before is that uh, I have my two state machines p central and p local plus the test case that will replace the user basically so if I select my demo test case okay if I load it and if I step in my simulator I will actually step in the generated TTCN test case uh, I have just generated uh, and if I keep stepping here okay at some point it will wait for a display message from the system so it will you know execute the system so we're really like simulating the test case at a really high level and simulating the, 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 the system so but actually what you do when you uh, execute this usually is you know, you can maybe have a graphical trace and tell the simulator that the time is handled automatically by the test case and just, you know, go through the test case straight away and see what, what it says in the end. And we can see here that the verdict is passed. Uh, if you look at, at the other uh, in, in interfaces, uh, you, you will see that uh, the, the execution was quite correct. So um, that's you know about it uh, for, for, for the basics of uh, the pragmatic specifier. Uh, we went through uh, a, an executable model and we have you know executed it uh, with the uh, interface, the uh, prototyping GUI. Uh, we interacted with it to make sure it was correct. When the scenarios were correct, we saved the execution traces and to be able to re-execute the uh, these scenarios we generated automatically the test cases we can run on a new version of the system and make sure the features the the, the functionalities we are describing uh, are still correct um, okay well thank you for your attention and please feel free to ask for an evaluation of the tool bye bye